We've got Vimal Ketriwal, the MD and CEO at KC International, joining in on the show right now. Vimal, hi, good morning. Welcome to ET Now. Good speaking with you as always. Uh, tell us about the new orders firstly, what the execution timeline is like and what kind of deliverables and margins are they coming in at? Uh, morning, Aisha. Thanks for having me. Uh, we have announced orders of roughly around 1,100 crores, 1,080 crores to be precise. And of which 90% are transmission and 10% is cable. Of the 90%, almost 70% is from the international market. Uh, as far as deliverables are concerned, uh, most of the orders would be between 12 to 18 uh, uh, months timeline. Cables obviously gets executed immediately. Okay. And what's your uh, order book uh, pipeline currently? What's it looking like in terms of visibility? So, uh, with this order intake, we have announced till now around 8,700 close of orders already. And we have L1 of 8,400. So, if you add the two of them, we are almost close to 16,000, 17,000. In addition to that, we have a pipeline today of almost 1,50,000 crores. Okay. And of which I'll say around 60,000 is a transmission. The rest would be civil, railways, uh, solar, etc. Interesting. You had earlier said, uh, Vimal, that you're expecting about 15% revenue growth. Uh, you're likely to reach about 23,000 crore rupees uh, revenue in FY25. Is that still intact or looking at this kind of very strong order pipeline, one should uh, anticipate an upgrade as well? Uh, I, I think it's too early to say anything about the upgrade because uh, if you look at, I think the issues uh, on uh, uh, labor and all are still continuing. So I think had that not been there, uh, probably we could have looked at something more. I, I, I'll, I think we'll wait for some time to decide whether we can do more or we will stick to, right now I think I'll stick to my 15%. Fair enough. Um so since you did allude to, you know, the issues with labor, etc. that you're currently facing, highlight a little bit more as to how grave the situation could turn out to be. So typically for most of the players, including the larger ones and people like us who are also fairly okay, uh, typically 20 to 30 percent is the labor shortage right now. And unfortunately, I think what had happened was we had thought that once the elections are over, the people would come back. Uh, People did start coming in. So I think in the last few weeks, we did get around 3,000 or 4,000 uh, uh, technicians and all coming in. But now you have hit the monsoons. So, you know, effectively, you have lost two quarters of uh, good time for working. Uh, and we are still seeing some reluctance of people to come back. I think that that's a problem which we are seeing. And I think we need to address it. And I think in the budget also, there was a lot of talk about skilling, etc. So some work will have to be done on, on, the, on the intake side. And then also, I think we need to do a lot more work now on how to uh, do a lot more mechanization, automation, etc., precast. And all. I think a lot of, lot of work is happening across all the areas to minimize the impact. Makes sense. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was your FI25 margin expectation, which was about 7.5% earlier with now nearly double-digit margins in the fourth quarter itself. Would you be revising this uh, uh, given the commodity volatility also, which is playing out as a factor? So uh, as of now, I think we will stick with our uh, margin guidance of what we have said. As far as commodity volatility is concerned, I think we are, I'll say, more or less uh, almost fully hedged. So I, I don't see uh, commodity volatility playing uh, against us at the moment, except I think for steel, which is uh, having a beneficial run. So I think we are pretty happy with what we are seeing in, in the commodity side. Margins will retain for it. I, I'll tell you the issue is that we need to start uh, a much faster execution of the new orders. Until that happens, you know, we will not be able to revise the margin. And we expect that that should start happening from Q3, which is why we said that Q4, we should we could probably touch between 9 to 10%. You've also recently announced a major fundraise of about almost 6,000 crore rupees. And I believe it's a combo of uh, QIP as well as NCDs. What is the timeline for this fundraise and how is it exactly that you're going to be utilizing the same? Unfortunately, the QIP and the NCD got combined together, although they are two different items. And NCD is for our normal working capital. You know, looking at the volatility and all that, we thought that let, let's get... A, so we have a borrowing, gross borrowing of around 5,000 crores. So we had thought that around 
thousand or fifteen hundred crores will let's have some long term borrowing by way of NCD. So that that so that that's one part of it. QIP we have been looking at it, saying that uh, we need to raise some money to uh, either build a war chest for acquisitions or also for strengthening our balance sheet. So we have to still decide what needs to be done. It's right now an enabling resolution which we had passed and which got approved last week by our AGM. Now we'll decide what needs to be done. ITD cementation stake. I think we have already made our, clear, our position clear on that earlier. Fair enough. Um, so, any other acquisitions that you may have already already identified, or you know, some something that you may have zeroed in on and is in the pipeline? I think we have been looking at a lot many of them. So, I, right now also we are looking at a few of them. I'm too early to comment uh, anything, but it's a it's a I'll say it's a continuous flow of opportunities which have been happening. Uh, and uh, in the EPC sphere, whether it is TND, whether it is civil, whether it is India or international. So we, we have been continuously uh, looking at various opportunities. Interesting. Also, uh, give us a little bit of a color on, um, you know, what's happening in the international market. Uh, any other geographies apart from U.S. and Middle East that are showing strong demand, according to you? Because there's still a lot of geopolitics which is currently at play. Unfortunately, no. I think the two geographies which we are even today, what we announced, a large part of that is from the Middle East. Okay, but that is really going strong, and U.S. Not only the U.S. part of it, but even uh, Mexico with the new you know president coming in, who is also a, a climate change expert and all that. We do expect that we will see a lot of uh, renewable growth and back on back on the back of which we will see TNT growth. Also, Brazil had a very large auction a few months back, so those orders are coming in. So, America's both, I'll say all three, US, Mexico and Brazil, we are expecting to see a significant growth. And Middle East is growing. And Middle East, the, the advantage what we are seeing is it's not just Saudi. It's also uh, UAE, it's also Oman. So, it's not a risk which is focused, concentrated on one country, although it's one region. But I think we are pretty happy with the growth which we are seeing there. Hearing that, uh, good to speak with you today, Vima. Thank you for taking the time out. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.